I'm Dr. Christine Whelan, a recent bride and relationship columnist. Brides, I get it. Let's get your questions answered. I'm Father Eric Andrews, a Paulist priest who prefers funerals to weddings. Welcome to another webisode of The Princess, The Priest, and The War for the Perfect Wedding. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I'm getting married, and I just had my uh, pre-canis uh, event. And uh, the thing that, that um, kind of confused me the most is that the, the priest wanted to hear all about my sex life, and I don't really get why you know, he wanted to know, because I mean, what can he really help me with? I mean, a virgin celibate priest? I mean, seriously, what can he really offer to help me out with that? Uh, thanks, Ryan, for that great question. I mean, I think this is something that uh, that many young adults are wondering about as they're going through pre-cana and they're going through those kind of awkward first sessions with the, the priest where you're sitting in his office, maybe across the table. I certainly have heard from many couples who have uh, who have talked to me about how awkward this is, and um, I had my own fair share of awkward moments on this uh, this topic as well. Father Eric, from your perspective, is it weird to talk to couples about sex? Well, we all come from different family backgrounds, and I remember in my family it wasn't uh, it wasn't dinner time conversation or it wasn't conversation much at all. So, yes, and I, that wasn't and I didn't have that in my face either uh, when these conversations happened. Thank you, Christine. So try, stop trying to distract me. What I'm saying, <laughs> but uh, not all priests are virgins. Uh, we are celibate. We're called the celibacy, but we're not. Uh, we, some of us have been around the block and have gone, come to the Lord for reconciliation, et cetera, et cetera. So we know a thing or two. Plus, we've uh, talked to a lot of married couples and a lot of engaged couples. I'm on a college campus, and anytime sex comes up, everybody is very interested in the conversation. So. Uh, we're not uh, we're not green behind uh, the ears or whatever the, the phrase is. We're, we're, yeah, we're I'm, I'm not sure there. we want metaphors here. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so you're saying that, uh, that that you even though you're a celibate priest, you know a little bit about this. Okay, that's fine, but it's still kind of awkward, right? Um, this is an awkward conversation to have. My parents handed me a book um, and said, <laughs> "I don't know, read it. If there are words you can't figure out, good luck." Um, you know, because they didn't want to have this conversation with me either. And uh, and and I think. That a lot of uh, I think that a lot of couples they don't even want to talk about it with each other. Now, is there another way to facilitate these conversations to make it um, a little bit less creepy? Well, you know what? Uh, I usually don't ask these quest questions right out of the blue. What I use is an instrument called the focus exam, which is an exam that couples take, and there's a lot of questions about sex and sexuality on them. And when I get their responses back. Uh, on that exam, I'll ask them about this topic of sex and sexuality, and it kind of opens it up in a, in a little less threatening way. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm there to make sure that the couples are able to talk to each other about all kinds of uncomfortable issues, finances, in-laws, uh, you know, whether this is the proper time to get married, and sex is a very important part of that. And I, what I'm really trying to do is help them communicate honestly and openly and be as transparent as possible uh, so that their intimacy may be uh, profoundly deepened on all levels, including the physical intimacy. So that's kind of my job as facilitator. So, Father Eric, when you're counseling couples, do you sort of go right for the nitty-gritty, or are you talking about more about this, this communication angle? Well, yeah, I talk about intimacy on all of its various levels. And I said when a relationship's really working, uh, there's spiritual intimacy, there's physical intimacy, there's intellectual intimacy, emotional, I mean... And so I really encourage them, because sometimes the sex is real good uh, when they're engaged, even though they shouldn't be having sex, but that's usually not the hard uh, issue. Uh, it's, it's about being able to communicate on other things, and no double entendre there. Oh, and so, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> so I just encourage them to be able to speak freely about every, and be totally transparent with each other on all issues. I know it's uncomfortable to talk about sex, and, and every time it comes up, uh, you know, and so that's why the, the, the beauty of pre cana is that there are other married couples involved in the process that couples can talk to about what their experience is. And I think peer to peer, that becomes a very important component of any pre cana program. Okay, but the basic question is, as a celibate priest, you know, how, how, can, how can you really be advising about something that, uh, that you don't know about or that you're not doing? Well, I tell you, I... I'm, I'm a resource, and uh, I'm happy to, to discuss whatever they want to talk about because it's really not about my experience. It's about getting the, the bride and the groom to talk to each other 
about what they want and allowing and allowing the priest or someone else to facilitate. It doesn't matter so much with my experiences, and I've heard a lot of stories, and that's all great. I want to make sure that they are able to communicate with them with each other because that that is really what we're preparing them to do. All right, so so this is great advice. So Ryan, um, I know it's going to be a little uncomfortable to have these conversations with the priest. Think of it maybe not as having a conversation with the priest about it, but about having a conversation with your fiance and about really communicating with her um, and uh, and getting over the embarrassment of talking about sex because this is going to be um, a conversation that you're uh, that you're going to have um, over many years to come. So yeah. good luck and best wishes, and um, and I hope you guys have um, a marriage full of great sex. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.